Hey, it's Candace, and in today's QuickBooks Tips and Tricks, we are moving on. So if you didn't hear, I'm doing my tips and tricks slightly different. This is the third video in a video series on really the mindset behind QuickBooks. And so if you missed them, feel free to check out my YouTube channel. The previous ones are on there. My website under my blog has all of my videos. So I also have a link below where you can put in your name and email and they'll all be emailed to you so you don't miss any of them as they come out each week. So let's talk about this a little bit. Today's video is we're jumping into the banking center. So the first one was really about mindset. Then we went into the customer center we created invoices and we talked about like why that detail is so important if you need it. So anything I teach you, it's all about what you need because every entrepreneur, even if you're in the same industry is going to need something different out of QuickBooks. It has to do with how much time you have. It has to do with just what you want as a manager. You know, QuickBooks isn't, doesn't have to be done any particular way. It just needs to, I prefer it to be accurate, like you're putting the right stuff in, but that you make it work for you. So if when I was teaching you about in the previous video about invoices and sales receipts, you were like, ah, eh, that's a lot. I get it. I know why, why to do that, but that's not what I want. Then this is the video for you. I'm going to get in and I'm going to teach you how do you input your income directly in the banking center. You know, I do this for some of the clients that I teach, like my hairdresser, she does it this way. Just keep it simple. Um, restaurant that I have does it the, the sales receipt way. So it just kind of depends, you know, what, what do you need and build QuickBooks for your business. It's all about you. It doesn't matter what anybody else needs. It matters what you want. And then it also matters that when you are done, you can make business decisions and you can provide a report to a tax professional that they understand what it is and things are in the right places. That's it. So today we're jumping into the banking center. I'm going to teach you how to enter in your income through the banking center. I'm going to teach you like, you know how you ever get a credit card refund check? If you have rewards, how would you enter that? If you return something to a store, say you went to Office Depot, you bought some supplies and you returned them and that money went back into your account, say you swiped an ATM or something. How do you, how do you track that in QuickBooks? How do you enter that? That's what we're going to learn today. And we're going to talk about mindset some more. You know, why are you doing it this way? What's the process? So come look over my shoulder. I'm super excited. Thank you for being here. I hope you are enjoying this series. The banking center. I like the banking center. Um, all right, so let's jump in here and get started. So the first step is make sure that whatever you're putting in when you click record deposit matches exactly what happened in your bank account. All right, so we're gonna click in record deposit and you're gonna use this when you really wanna keep QuickBooks simple and easy. You don't wanna track sales tax. You don't need accounts receivable. You don't want the items. You just wanna get in, you wanna get it done and you wanna get back out. So the first step is from the home screen, you're gonna click record deposit. Then you go here, it says deposit to. You drop that down and you make sure you have the checking account you put it into or wherever the money, whatever account you have it sitting in. Then you pick a date that you wanna do the deposit. Let's do this one in November. Let's do it November 13th. Then the memo says deposit, you can leave that blank or leave it what it says received from this is where you can choose your customer if you want it lets you know that they have an outstanding balance and then if it is an invoice and you want to apply a payment to an invoice you actually have to use receive payments that's where when we are on the home screen right here where it says receive payments that's what we're talking about that's why i said you have to follow the line the same with when you're doing Vendors, you always have to follow a line. Wherever you see a line, you need to make sure you follow it. That's There's a reason it's there. So you pick your customer. If you don't have an invoice for them, then you're going to go down. You're going to directly pick which income category you want that to go to. I'm going to pick online sales. So online sales is the customer and online course is the actual income account. I, I think I said sales, but it's actually online course is the income account. I want that to show up on the profit and loss. So this will show up on the profit and loss. It will not show up on the sales by item that we talked about in the previous video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to go back and check it out. Then you can choose to put in a memo if you want. So, you know, you could put the person's name like John Smith, and then you could put down 
whatever your course is called, if you do sell online courses, we'll just call it QuickBooks eCourse. That's a different course that I have. If they paid with check, you can put that there. If they paid with, you know, a Visa card or whatever credit card you put, you select the payment type. If you want, you don't have to do that. None of these are required. If you do set up classes, that one is required and the dollar amount is required. So let's just say like $250. So what we're saying is we put money in this bank account on this date for this customer. You don't have to have a customer if you don't want for this type of income for this dollar amount. Those are really what we're getting. And when you click save and close, what now is happening is when we go under the reports, company and financial profit and loss standard, you'll see the $250 shows up on your profit and loss. But if you go under the sales by item, it will not show up there. See zero. If you try to pull a report by your customer, sales by customer, it will not show up there either. If you want any of those reports to work, you'll need to create invoices or sales receipts. So I hope that makes sense. That's how easy it is. And that's the one that uh, a lot of entrepreneurs use when they're super busy or they are at the end of the year and the, or the next year and they got to go back and get ready for their taxes and they just want their income in so that when they go to their profit and loss, like I was showing you, it will show up. So it shows up for as of today. And if you pick the year, it will show up in there as well. And it's going to be under what's called online courses. You double click and you'll see it's right there. Deposit, John Smith, 250 bucks. If that's all you want your result to be, you don't want to have to go through each one and create here, then you don't have to. All right. This will save you a lot of time if this is what you need. It's all about you and what you want to design. That's why I talk about the mindset. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I got to go in and do all the other things. I recommend a lot of people do this if they don't want to create invoices. You know, a lot of the people I work with are familypreneurs and the wife does a bookkeeping and she doesn't want to take the time with, with her family and her kids to create all the invoices. So I'm like, perfect. Then you don't have to go right here and just do it this way. And they're like, oh, that gives me what I need. Perfect. That's awesome. One thing you can do if you do want a detailed report about your sales is if you go under company and financial, there's one called income by customer summary. There's also a detail. If you click on that, it will give you every one of your customers and their total sales, even if you're using the make deposit screen. So you'll notice over here, it includes sales receipts or the deposits, it's anything. And the reason this one particular one works is because you're pulling it under the company financial. So it's based off of the income account where when you go under sale um, customers and receivables and you try to pull it or sales, this is based off of them using the customer center to generate the reports where this one is being generated directly from your income account. So if you want that, feel free to go right here and get the detail. So you will get some detail. All right. So let's say the next example I want to give you is you have miscellaneous income or you have a refund where you returned something that you purchased. So the first step is which bank account did it go to? What date did you do it on? What date did you get the refund for? Then you're going to pick who you had paid and received a refund from, I'm going to say Office Depot. Then you're going to pick your from account. And the from account that you want to pick is whatever account you originally coded the expense to. So if you went to Office Depot, we haven't got to the expenses yet, but let's say you went to Office Depot and you picked up office supplies as your expense. Then when you're putting money back against it, Office Depot, office supplies, because you're reducing the expense because you received the money back. You're welcome to put a memo in like return, you know, refund for paper or whatever it is that you received a refund for, for your, so you can remember what you did. You don't have to worry about the check number or the payment type. If you have classes, you want to select that. And then I'm going to put the dollar amount in here. It would be a positive dollar because you're actually depositing $25 and 98 cents to your account. You hit save and close. And then if you went into your check register, 
you will see the 2598 right here. Now, if you're curious what the blue line represent, it's I'm creating this video on the 13th of November and I did this transaction as of the 16th. So anything above the blue line is, is has happened or is current and anything below is in the future. All right, so I'm gonna click the little X. So that's as easy as it is to record your income. You pick who it's from, make sure you have the right bank account, the right date, and then you just decide which income account you want to go to. I recommend keeping your income accounts to a relatively small number of accounts because if you get too detailed and too complicated for your profit and loss, it just makes it super hard to really manage your business, to say, okay, that's that income. When you get so detailed, it just becomes pages and pages long and the report isn't easy to read. So try to keep it super simple. If you had a credit card, you would go in and you would find your credit card. Let's just say Capital One as an example. Your credit card sent you a rewards check. Then you're actually going to create what I consider an other income account and you're going to call it credit card rewards. If you don't know how to do that, what you do is you go up to the top and click add new or just start typing it in. Then you're going to drop down this one that says other account types. You can click other income and it actually tells you over here it's dividend, interest, insurance, reimbursements, that kind of thing. You click continue. You tell it what you want to call it and then you hit save and close. And then you get your credit card rewards and then you can say the date range it's for. So like say January to November of 15. You can put the check number in if you want. You can say that it was a check. You can put it under business and then you can say, you know, you got 140 $104.35 and then click save and close. And that's it. That's all you got to do. It's that simple. So I hope this tip has been beneficial. What I really want you to think about is what do I want to see when I go in and I pull a profit and loss? Because that's really not only using this for your tax purposes, you're using this for management purposes. So on this one, because I don't have any expenses, you see the office supplies as negative and you see the credit card rewards down here. If I pulled it for the full year, you'll see it gets mixed in with everything else and it just reduces your office supplies expense. If you double click, you'll see it right here show up. So anytime you wanna see the detail of where those numbers come from, just double click on the number and it will give you the detailed transaction report. And then you'll see credit card rewards and you'll see this right here, double click on it and you'll see there are two transactions that make that up. So again, thank you for being here. I'm excited in the next video, we are gonna get into more of the banking center and I'm gonna teach you how to start entering in your expenses. So now we've covered income, now we're getting into our expenses and I'm really gonna teach you what's the simplest, easy way for you to track your expenses in QuickBooks to save you time, but to allow you to not only do your taxes, but to manage and grow your business. So if you enjoyed this tip, feel free to share it. And if you want to receive all of these tips and the ones in the future that I share, feel free to go to the link below and put your name and email address. And I will see you guys again next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.